So hi everyone and welcome to this video on forecasting coronavirus cases, both daily and totals using profit. And uh, it's going to be a very simple uh, video which generally introduces forecasting to maybe people who don't really necessarily know all the specific details on forecasting. Now before we start, I'd like to preface this by saying that um, the profit package and the profit libraries, it wasn't necessarily designed to uh, forecast uh, coronavirus cases. So it may not be the most ideal way to do this forecast. Uh, it's not an epidemiological model of any kind, but I think it's still useful in giving insight as to where things could be headed. So uh, let's start. So the first step is essentially to uh, install and call the packages for you. So uh, so let's call the packages. Now, if you haven't installed these packages, you may want to use the install.packages command to do so, but I have them installed on my Mac. So I'll just call them using the library command. So we're gonna use two packages. The first one is profit, right? And we're also gonna use tidyverse. So tidyverse, okay? So we have those two there. So let's start first with daily, uh, daily coronavirus virus cases. So uh, I have a data set uh, here, which is also linked in the description box below. And uh, I have data sets uh, on the Philippines for the additional cases. So that's daily. So how many cases are added each day? And also the total cases as a cumulative sum. So how many cases are there over time? So we're going to try and explore both and see what we can get out of those. So again, preface it by saying that this is not a formal epidemiological model. So uh, let's just bear that in mind when we do the forecast. So to load the data set, so let's call the data set um, DF1. Okay, so that's our daily and uh, it's a CSV file. So let's use the read.csv command and uh, I'll choose the file in this manner. So file.choose, the file is saved uh, somewhere here. So that's daily COVID. I'll open. Then uh, if you just type head df1, that shows the first few rows. And we can see that our date column is named ds and it's in UTF-8 format. And we have y, which is the number of daily cases. Now, it needs to be in this manner because we're uh, under the profit package and this is how profit recognizes it. So uh, after we load the data set, so you can see it here in the uh, environment tab, we can now uh, call, okay, so call the profit function and fit the model. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Then let's call the model model one. Okay, so that's profit of DF1. So we're essentially making a model from the data frame that we have. Then uh, let's create an object future one, which is essentially I'm gonna add uh, sample uh, sample periods for this uh, for this data frame that I have, uh, which I wanted to forecast. And say I wanna forecast hmm, maybe 30 days ahead. So that's periods equal to 30 and I get that then just to verify okay so let's see the tail of future one so you'll see that these are the last few dates that I want to forecast in so that's essentially what that function does then I want to forecast now so let's build now our forecast okay then so let's make an object called forecast one okay and what we want to do is we want to use the predict command predict Okay, and we're going to use model one uh, to forecast future one. Okay, future one. Okay, so we're going to use model one to forecast future one. And you should see that it should, you should see the stop sign and there. So my future one is already there. And say I wanted to display just maybe the last few forecasts. So just to see, so forecast C. Okay, so let it display the DS, which is the date the estimated value, which is your forecast. So that's y hat, the upper bound of the forecast. That's y hat. On, uh, I'm sorry, the lower bound. So that's y hat lower and also the upper bound. So that's y hat underscore upper. OK, and then we have that there. Um, so I made a slight error. OK, so it should be 
forecast. Oh, whoops, forecast one. Okay, did see that. And you should see that uh, it forecasts that uh, since we're not allowed to have point something of a human, we just round that up. And essentially, it thinks that these will be the number of new cases reported on those dates. So some of the days are higher than other days. So uh, we'll see how that goes. So I think it's better to see it when we plot the estimates. Okay, so if we plot the estimate, it's going to look uh, something like this. So we use the dipplot command. So dipplot.profit of model 1. And we're going to uh, plot forecast 1. Forecast 1. And we have something here. So notice um, we had zero cases, of course, at the start of January. But as we moved on, of course, um, to more and more dates, we have more and more cases reported. And we can see that around the time that Manila opened up for GC, for uh, general community quarantine, we saw a rapid spike in cases. And uh, that's probably due to delayed reporting and to some other factors. And it thinks that it will continue this sort of upward trend as we go into August given that probably lockdown restrictions wouldn't be reimposed. And we can essentially also plot the components of the forecast. So we have a command profit underscore plot underscore components. So we can see some components of it. So let's see how that goes. And it's going to, so see, we can see that generally, of course, we see that upward trend and it doesn't seem to be slowing down. Okay, but it is uh, sort of like reaching a peak. And we see that most cases are generally reported on Friday. So uh, maybe there is some day of the week thing there we're not particularly sure of. So that's it for daily coronavirus cases. So we see that upward trend. But I think it's also interesting to see the cumulative. So cumulative coronavirus cases. So essentially, we're going to use the same commands, but then we're going to use a different data set. And let's see how it will go. So let's name it now DF2. Okay, so that's DF2. And uh, the data set is called total COVID. Okay, so total COVID. And we have that there. So let's open that. Then we just change this one to head DF2. So notice, uh, it also starts from this date at December 31. So let's name the model model two, and it's going to be uh, using profit to create a model from our data set, which is now DF2. Okay, then we have future two instead of future one, then this now uses uh, model two. And say like our first model, we want to forecast 30 periods ahead. So we do that. Then let's see uh, the last dates in our forecast. It's going to be, so we have uh, around the end of August. August 9th will be the last date of our forecast. Then uh, let's create now our forecast, which uses model two to predict future two. Okay. And then let's change this one to forecast two. So note it made forecast two already. So change that to forecast two. And it thinks that this will be the, the Philippines will reach uh, around 75,704 cases uh, by August 8th. Okay. So uh that's its estimate let's see if that holds up in time so let, let's plot it like we did before so model 2 forecast 2 okay and uh you'll notice so if we zoom in here in that on that sample period here so let me just adjust so generally there are some dates that are over that are underestimated like these dates okay but then there are some that are overestimated but again that's subject to the reporting standards of uh, the Department of Health. Maybe some cases are delayed, maybe others are not so reliable, or some clinics haven't reported them yet, so maybe that may be the cause or something. But generally, we see that the upward trend is uh, expected to increase, oh, and probably not a slowdown, because it seems like the slope is um, generally increasing, so we don't necessarily see some flattening. And uh, we can plot the components similar to what we did before. So this is model two forecast two. So let's see how that goes. And uh, again, we see that same high reporting every Friday, something curious that we may want to look about. And we see that upward trend as well. So uh, that's a simple video on how to 
uh, forecast using a profit of the coronavirus cases for the Philippines. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next video.